Peace out, Varanasi. Good night, my dudes. Good morning, my dudes. We have arrived in New Delhi. Thank you, sir. Oh my gosh. My dudes, we are here at the Amrao Hotel, and oh my gosh, am I just blown away. Back in New Delhi, we actually fly to Sri Lanka tomorrow, so Mike and I were looking for a hotel that's close to the airport, and the Amrao was kind enough to host us. As you guys know, we have been hostel living for quite a while now, and coming to some place like this is quite a nice change of pace. I cannot wait to show you guys the grounds and the hotel. I, I'm, I'm blown away, this is unbelievable. Bathtub, that is not bad. That is not bad at all. Man, I haven't had a bath in so long. I cannot wait to just bathe, just chillax in here. But that's it. As you guys can see, the Amrao Hotel. Oh my gosh, it is stunning. It's stunning. Far, far much nicer than uh, just your average hostel. And hey, it's always nice to treat yourself, especially when you're about to take a flight. I mean, we're flying really early, so it's quite nice to be located right here beside the airport. All right, Mike, what's the plan today? Um, there is a pool here and I have not swam in a pool for so long, so I think we're gonna take advantage of that. We're also going to go into Delhi. Really wanted to see the Lotus Temple, which we didn't see last time we were here, so we'll check that out. Dude, dude, I see it. It's over there, it's right there. <laughs> oh, and after a successful day in New Delhi, Look at what they dropped off for us. Cookies and chocolates and apples and bananas. They know me too well. Cookies and chocolates, the way to my heart. I, um, I, uh, uh, I'll get to those ones later. It's been a while, dudes. <sighs> Seriously. When I'm at home, I work out quite often. I'd say like five or six times a week, but I have worked out basically non-existently for the past, not even month, like two months, because my grandpa was in the hospital and I hardly worked out then either. So it's been a while. I also don't know if the cookies were a great idea before this. 979. I feel the cookies and the chocolate. That's my jam, that's my main man, Mr. Sheeran. Love him. Okay friends, I'm done at the gym. We're headed to the pool. Oh. <laughs> my dudes, that was so cold. <gasps> what Noah said, I was freaking freezing. Was that's not it. expecting to go for like a polar bear swim in India. That was not on my list of things to do. After spending one month in India and traveling the entire country going south to north, I have some tips and some things that you need to know before you travel. I'll put timestamps to all of these different topics down below so you can sort through them and figure out which one you want to hear about. Starting it off with visas. So as Canadian citizens, Mike and I really had to do very little for our visas and so do a lot of countries. You basically, you can go online to the Indian government website, which I will link down below and you just fill out the form with all of your personal information, passport information, and um, it takes about 15 minutes, and then you get an electronic visa. With that, you're able to arrive at any of the main airports in India, and you can just sort out your visa there when you arrive. I highly recommend it for almost any situation, except if you plan on crossing into India by land, for example, over Nepal, you're not allowed to use an e-visa. Topic number two, vaccines. There was so much talk before I came on this trip about what to do via my doctor, my travel medicine doctor, my parents, 
my followers who have been telling me what to do. There are just so many voices in my head and also Google, Google's a big one. This is kind of what I've gathered and the choices that I made, of course, do not only go off what I say, this is just my two cents on the whole thing. In terms of vaccines, we got, Mike and I both got basically the same thing. All of the standard vaccines, so Hep A, Hep B, Typhoid, Cholera, Tetanus, Flu Shot, MMR, everything like that. The extra ones that they really tried to sell us on were Japanese encephalitis, which I have gotten before, so I didn't need to, and Mike ended up going for it, because of Sri Lanka, right? Yeah. Vaccines are like an investment because they stay with you for a while. That's what we did. In terms of rabies, which is a very expensive jab and what a lot of people tried to sell us on, we both opted against it just because if you get it, you also have to go to a hospital. It just extends your window of time a bit. And we weren't going anywhere super, super rural. So we thought it was a safe bet. The next topic is safety. So before we arrived in India, basically the only things we had heard about it were terrible, scary, it's not safe, you're, you're gonna get robbed, you're gonna lose all your stuff. And I can tell you that that is not, that is like the furthest thing from the truth. Mike and I actually have not felt unsafe at any single point in the journey. Um, we have not felt in danger, we have not been robbed, we have not heard of anyone getting robbed, we have heard nothing of the sort. I think it's very much so just a preconceived notion in the Western world that India might not be the safest place, but I'm here to tell you firsthand, well, first four hands, that it's a safe place, right Mike? Yes, four hands. Yeah, like seriously, neither of us have felt like anything that we would need to feel to feel unsafe. It, everything's been good, everything has been A-OK. -okay. I mean, we do common things, like we don't walk through dark alleys at three in the morning. There's no reason to feel unsafe. Yeah, we don't flaunt around money either, so there's no reason, I guess, for anyone to do anything to us, but if you're walking around with rollies on your wrist, real rollies, that might be an issue, but who knows. Next up is scams. So although we felt safe, one thing that you have to be aware of is that scams are readily available. There is no shortage of people trying to take you for your money, not in a violent way or anything, but kind of take advantage of you since they're more familiar with things than you are. So uh, the most common one I'd say that happens to us on a daily basis, but like with this information it won't happen to you, is Tuk Tuk's. Tuk Tuk's often try to absolutely ding you for a price and it's your transportation, it's just like a cab. We have found that when you're arriving at an airport or a bus stop or any kind of hub of transportation, if you just walk outside of the gates, you take like a five minute stroll away, you'll be able to find a tuk-tuk, no problem, for a much more reasonable price. And then you always, always haggle them. No matter what they say, you haggle them down and you, you just be very stern with your pricing and you will definitely get a normal price. But that's the thing though, like we'll have arrived and they won't know that we are aware of the prices and they'll charge us like, or say 400 rupees when the price has been like 80. So you just have to be very vigilant of that because they will try and scam you. Another thing that you have to be aware of is just knowing your surroundings and understanding that people don't always have your best interest in the front of their mind. They often have ulterior motives. For example, they want to sell you something or bring you somewhere. But if you just keep aware of your surroundings and you be smart about it and go, is this person really being genuinely nice and curious about me? Or are they trying to take me somewhere to sell me something? So those are just things to keep in mind. One more thing to note on scams is using a card. So when Mike and I travel, we only ever use our cards in ATMs and we make sure, we thoroughly check those to make sure that there is no skimmers or anything. You can just pull at the number pad, pull at the insert slot. Here in India, they're actually pretty safe. Every ATM we've ever encountered has been in an enclosed building with a security camera in there. Yeah, we've had no issues with that, but we have met people who have actually used their cards at restaurants and had them skimmed and had money withdrawn from their account. That's happened here, we've heard a couple stories. So the rule is, and it's a general rule of thumb when traveling in this these parts of the world, you do not use your card somewhere where you don't know where it's going. So if a waiter takes it, unless you're at a very fancy hotel or restaurant, like the Umrao, you can trust them. But if you're just in an everyday shop and happen to have a machine, um, don't trust it because they can easily just turn around, skim your card, and then give it back and take all your money. So next up is cost. 
So cost is a big thing. Um, it kind of is the decider of how much you travel, how long you travel. The good thing is, is that India is cheap. It is very cheap coming from the Western world over here. And that is because our money goes a lot further here than it does at home. When I earn a dollar at home, it roughly equates to 50 rupees here. But 50 rupees is a lot of buying power. You can buy like a lot of things with that. So your money transfers over favorably, making things cost less. And to give you a rough idea, this entire month I've spent about 800 Canadian dollars, but that is not including flights inside of India. On the topic of cost, living conditions. So living conditions we had also heard are absolutely horrendous in India, and I can also say that that could not be further from the truth. As you can see, where we are right now, it's absolutely beautiful. The hostels we've stayed in throughout the entire trip have almost all been amazing and couldn't have asked for anything better. Trains have also been very nice. We have been shown pictures of trains with people hanging out and like it being super, super like. It's only crazy if you decide to opt for going in the public class of trains. If you opt for anything more than that, you're, uh, you're golden, you're, you're gonna have a nice trip. I would say that the living conditions are A plus and you can get those nice conditions for a very reasonable price. Last but not least, tips. So we've worked out a couple tips right here. Number one I'm going to say is that when you're booking flights inside of India, make sure you book them in advance. Like I said, I specified I spent $800 here in cash, but if I were to include my plane tickets, it'd be $1,200, which is outrageous for this part of the world as flights uh, domestically are usually very cheap, except in India. If you book last minute flights in India, it's very expensive. So I paid $200 and so did Mike to get from Southern to North India because we booked like three days in advance. But if you book like one month in advance, I think our friend paid like $60 to do that. So it's good to uh, kind of plan your flights out here in advance so you don't get dinged outrageous amounts. Another thing is when you're traveling in trains, I think the best value, the best option you're gonna find is 3AC. 3AC is definitely the best. You get pillows, blankets, a nice bed, and it's very civilized. So if you're traveling by train, 3AC. Another tip on trains is that before you leave your country, you should sign up for the IRCTC website. I'll put it down below. But that website allows you to basically book your own train tickets so you don't have to pay someone else fees while you're here. It's very handy because you're able to kind of sort that stuff out and see the train times and what works best for you. So I really recommend you do that. And you have to do it in your home country because of your phone number. One thing about that too is that the IRCTC website is a crappy website. So we were actually put onto another website called Clear Trip where it's so much easier. It does charter. It does cost a small fee, but it's so much easier and so much better to book your tickets that way. Yeah, clear trip's good. So if you can do that, I'll put both those down below. Um, quickly running through the rest, SIM cards, we highly recommend Airtel. Airtel's a very good SIM card. They work countrywide, nationwide. It's awesome. Um, I would highly recommend you download Maps Me and you download the India map. That's just so you never get lost. Even when you don't have data, you always have an offline map. Uh, another app is Hostel World. It's really good for finding hostels, finding highly reviewed and highly rated hostels so you don't get stuck in a crap shack. And uh, the last one, and I think probably the most important one, is have fun, be friendly to everyone, and travel with an open mind. India is very different and very um, hectic compared to anywhere else we've been. It's super chaotic, and if you travel with a closed mind and you're, you don't kind of accept it for what it is, you're not gonna have a good time. But if you travel with an open mind and you learn to love the people, you learn to make friends, you learn to kind of get out of your comfort zone, you will have some of the most amazing memories you can possibly have. So those are, those are some tips. I highly recommend that you think about those before you travel to India. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I've really enjoyed this India trip and I cannot wait for what's to come. We're headed to Sri Lanka and very soon. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you so much. And I'll see you all in another one.